ElectroCast. Why wait to see if you'll get something you like this Valentine's Day when you can go to BlueNile.com and find something you'll love? Whether you're looking to treat yourself to a little winter sparkle or show a galantine how much you appreciate them, Blue Nile offers a wide selection of high-quality designs, expert guidance, and free 30-day returns for the ultimate peace of mind. You can even design your own jewelry. Right now, save up to 50% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. It's missing the point. It's the power rankings after a zany, a whimsical, a ludicrous week one in the NFL. And we're back. We're off. We did a preseason power rankings, but it didn't really didn't really have the testosterone, the cojones, the uh, the the wonderful joie de vivre of the uh, of the the peak of the power ranking shows last year. I, uh, dear listeners, have gotten a glimpse into Bobby's power rankings. And they are suitably fucking annoying to me that I think they're <laughs> fun. Uh, we're going to have a fun show. I do, I do think that the NFL is suffering, Bob, from this writer's strike because obviously they don't have a, a competent script put together for this season yet uh, because all the writers are striking. And I think that just caused a lot of craziness in the, in the first week of, um, of the NFL. I think what I'd like to do, I have your, uh, I have your updated power rankings, not the ones I screenshotted to make fun of you for getting, for forgetting the Bengals. Forgetting I have, fucking Bengals exist. <laughs> for forgetting the Bengals exist. Um, <laughs> I do have your, your real power rankings that I'm going to pull up, but I do want to talk about a couple of storylines before we, um, yeah, before we, we jump right in. Uh, number one, obviously being four snaps worth of Aaron Rodgers' time as a jet. You laugh. I mean, it's like it's I can't tell how to feel about it because I do have like a hard and fast rule about like not in like reveling in injuries for players. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I also at the same time, like fucking hate Aaron Rodgers. But at the same same time, I'm like, you were healthy for the entirety of your run in Green Bay, <laughs> you piece of shit. But now, you know, four snaps played by for that cursed franchise uh, for that for that woeful uh jets franchise that were really finally looking up in the world fantasy managers that only had your rogers left to play uh all over the world just fucking so depressed do you see the um, one that was like point point oh seven points or something like that like point oh six or something absurd yeah. like that i think uh i think it, it is sad for them that this has happened it's obviously opened up a conversation about you know, high, there's a certain group of high profile quarterbacks that are not currently signed to a team. So I guess my question for you would be, if you were the Jets, do you, do you, I'm going to make his like, like hell every day practice Zach Wilson, this situation, considering he had, you know, he went and won the game for his team against, I, I, not that impressively. I really do maintain my stance from last season that the bills are borderline still mediocre and that Josh Allen really isn't that guy. And I think that that they kind of lost the game more than the Jets won it. But do you Zach Wilson it? Do you offer Tom Brady an ungodly sum of money? Would he take it being, you know, having just donned a, a, a ladies slim fit jersey and jogged around Foxborough? That was um, so in, in his, What was up with that fucking jersey? It's so <laughs> weird, bro. Oh my God. The <laughs> this whole thing was weird. It was yeah. like he went to the TV gap to get a TV. Yeah, it, tw- it goes along with his shaved jaw. It's very strange. He's a very strange man. The, the I, I guess, like, would he take the job? Probably not. There's, there's a shout for Colt McCoy. There's a shout for Colin Kaepernick again. We're going to go down that fucking road and have that conversation again, I guess. He's, he's going to have another workout, you know, uh, whatever. Look, I, I mean, I'm all for everything that Colin Kaepernick did in protesting police brutality, but if we're talking about it in just football terms, I think we can safely say he had one to perhaps one and a half good seasons in the NFL and the, uh, the, the constant talk of him, it was a great, it was a great little run that he had. Don't get me wrong. Super athletic did, did everything really well, but at 35, not having taken an NFL snap in six years, I don't think that the conversation we maintain, but overall, my question to you, Bob is like, if you're the jets right now, and other than like wanting to kill yourself, do you stick with, with, with Zach or do you go to the market or do you, I mean, uh, maybe- Entertaining trade with with a team like I, I the Cowboys might be able to fleece them for Trey Lance. 
Yeah, I mean, I I just feel like with Jets, right? So far, it's you're right. It's not funny, but it's literally the the most believable, unbelievable script that you possibly could write for that week one game. You know, like with all the lead up going into it, the hard knocks on national TV. The Jets had their own YouTube hard knocks. Like everyone followed. What did you watch the Jets hard knock? Yeah, I watched some of it. Listen, I actually was coming around on Rogers coming into this season like i loved all the shit talking the the giants thing where he's like i don't even know your name bro i don't even know your name like i loved all that shit right savage <laughs> yeah and but so like he was winning me over man and when i heard he got hurt it just it it's like i said it's it's the most possible jets thing that could possibly happen they didn't even make it one fucking drive into their season before Listen, we both had these existential football breakdowns before where, like, your season's over before you even get to realize that it began. And mm-hmm. that's what just happens to them. So, yeah, it, it's heartbreaking, but at the same time, kind of hilarious. There was a question in the Missing the Point group chat posed this morning that I, I didn't want to touch because I thought it would start an argument. But it was like, do the Pats now have a, a realistic chance of moving up in that division? and I, you know, I'm sort of, I'm sort of mixed on it because I thought, and this is another game I kind of want to talk about from the perspective of the Patriots. I know that the Eagles are in the power rating, but from the perspective of the Patriots, like they looked all right, to be honest, like Mac Jones looked all right. Once they kind of got things going, I wonder your take from that game. And you probably be considering the time it was on may have watched it in a, in a red zone format like I did. And I also had the bears on, so I wasn't, you know, watching it as, as deeply as. Uh, perhaps the Patriots fans in our podcast might have, but w- was your takeaway from that game that the Eagles just didn't look themselves or that the Pats, you know, and Mac Jones were like just looking tidy? I think so. If, to answer the first question you asked me about the Jets, they don't make a trade. They stick with Zach Wilson. Just yeah. they have to. They have yeah. to stick with Zach Wilson. If, yeah. You know, what I mean? with, with, with the way the their season was going, if they make a trade, that's literally the end of Zach Wilson. If they bring someone else from the outside in, then you have to get rid of Zach Wilson too because oh, you're no. telling him that. Wilson. Yeah, but anyway, you're, so you already did do that. Though. They already went yeah. got hundreds. Like they already- you can't do it again. Like you know. <laughs> but for the Pats, man, yeah. So I think it was. It reminded me a lot of that Bengals game from last year. Do you remember that game where the, the Bengals were up like nineteen to nothing, and the Pats came all the way back and they almost won. And they even had a shot of winning the game at the end of the game uh, if, you know, a couple calls go the right way for him. So I think it's a little bit of both, to be perfectly honest. I think think the Pats are a little bit better than maybe we gave them credit for, specifically because of coaching. Like, they obviously, obviously have a talent deficiency compared to a lot of the teams in the NFL. But coaching-wise, man, they they will stick with anyone on any given Sunday. And I don't think there's any doubt about that. I mean, you just saw them do it to the the runner-ups. So yeah. obviously, like they they can stick with the cream of the crop, man. But the Eagles but too. Are we not, why are we not thinking that maybe there's an Eagles hangover? We can discuss that when we get to their second. Yeah, I mean, so I I think the Eagles too is just a little bit of like you said, hangover. They lost both their coordinators, so things are going to be shaky at the beginning. I think. Yeah, that is like right, you know that there there is like sort of provable scientific evidence in uh, to 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 lock down what a Super Bowl hangover is, and a lot of the time it really is something that people don't talk about, which is like. You guys got to the Super Bowl, so you be, your coaching staff became coveted. Right. Yeah, you get poached around the the rest of the league. And you know, would you rather be a, a, an offensive coordinator on a Super Bowl runner up team, or would you rather be a head coach of your own team? And I think most people would probably. I mean, it's your career. You know, like you want to just keep moving up as much as you possibly can. So, I do agree that there's there they didn't look quite like the Eagles of last year. But like you said, and I think this will be a theme throughout the whole of this conversation, like it's it was a weird week. But anyway, we'll save the Eagles chat for them. I, I, I was suitably impressed with the Patriots though, actually coming back because the start of that game looked like it was going to end up how the Cowboys game ended up. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, sort of, they really did pull it around. And I, I do I do credit Belichick for, uh, you know, as much as people sort of. Uh, lionize him as a tactician and as someone who can think on the fly and like never has a, a consistent like set game plan like he plays so well to the weaknesses of other teams I do think that like everybody on the Patriots is still motivated to be a Patriot despite I agree with you like a, a, a noticeable dearth in in talent but anyway if you want to hear more uh 
uh, of an in-depth Patriots conversation here on Missing the Point. We we do have a, a dedicated Patriots show that Mike and uh, Mike and Ray did. So when you're done listening to this and you want more of your fix on that, please do go listen to that. What uh, was the snap? I'm just curious. What was the snap count for Zeke and Romandre? I, I didn't. I think Zeke was got close to 50-50. Yeah, Zeke got some runs, but I'm pretty sure Romandre Stevenson looked really good. He's a really good runner. So there's that. Oh, yeah. Last honorable what, mention. Well, go ahead. I was gonna say, what was your opinion on the on the YouTube TV four box, bro? Love it. Love YouTube TV. Well, it was a little um, a little overwhelming at first, correct? I didn't know what to do. I agree with you there. A little overwhelming. Yeah. And it also, like, you have to remember too, like here in Los Angeles, my my games, my day, my football day starts at 10 a.m. So mm. it, it on a Sunday. So Saturday night, I may have imbibed in some spirits. And getting up kind of bleary eyed to try to like get the TV gone. I had to take my bedroom to this is my process. Okay. Just for the, for the listeners, I take my bedroom TV out to the living room, put it on the fireplace. I turn on the main TV. I turn on the bedroom TV. Now, obviously I had all my Sunday tickets signed up for, I uh, canceled Hulu. I went over to YouTube and because we live in 2023, I didn't have to have a man come to my house between the hours of 9 AM and 6 PM to like switch my cable box over, which was nice. So the ad, I mean, I, is DirecTV dead now? It, it has to be. Like, who's getting, I got an ad for them the other day. I'm like, what the fuck? What are you even advertising anymore? Like, what? Yeah, just, just, <laughs> just go away. And like, I never had Sunday ticket in like DirecTV. I would like use the yeah. Sunday ticket app on my Apple TV. And it was awful. It was so bad. You'd be restarting the app all the time. You would be like changing the games around. And what it goes to show is that like YouTube, I think like really figured it out really quickly. But it, to your point, I got it on the TVs and I got the main game that I wanted to see. Like I, you know, what we'll do is we'll do red zone on one TV and like one box of a, of a main mm-hmm. game. Either the Steelers or the Bears are playing in my house. My wife be a Steelers fan. So put the Steelers on the main TV for her, which obviously wasn't a pleasant experience, but we, which we'll talk about when we get to the 49ers, I think in the, in the power rankings. But uh, I tried out the four box on the side TV with, you know, as the Steelers game was kicking off, I was trying to, to figure it out and, I would, maybe I was too hungover or something, but I was like, just, we'll just put the red zone on. I don't know what to do. So as the day progressed, I, I, and I saw people tweeting about it. I was like, okay, I need to like experiment with this. I need to figure this out. Cause basically what it is, is it's, it's, it's making you Scott Hansen, right? It's, Correct. You have to, you have to be the producer of your own red zone. Sure, yeah. your own thing. So I think what I would love is if I was in a situation where neither the Steelers or the Bears were on and I could focus completely on the four box and be like, oh, what's happening over here? Oh, what's happening over here? That I think I could really get behind. But I wasn't put in a great position from a personal standpoint to deal with it. What did you think of it? Did you really get to, p- to play with it since the Cowboys yeah. and the Nike? So at first, I definitely lean more towards the roads at red zone and i almost felt like i wasted my money was in the first like ah, i just want scott hansen back in my yeah bro like yeah want- like that first one o'clock hour i was like should i have even done all this like this is a lot of money for me to just switch to red zone at the end of the day yeah by four the- some say you know eight eight straight hours of commercial free football that, and, and i wanted that in my life for the start. yeah yeah but the 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 4 p.m. games though that was a different story. The 4 p.m. games I feel like I settled into a good zone and had four games going because it was the only four on. So it was like it was sure. good because you could switch four between them all. No, I think it was I thought it was five games on. Was there five in the? I think there. I think you're right. I think it was five. But either way, you could you know you can four box it. You can quad box it yourself yeah. with the. I think the later games it is going to be more useful. Have more utility. Going. Yeah, it definitely. It the the 1 p.m. games is very overwhelming. To have all those games because like you have to pick between four of them you have to get the right box go you know what i mean it's like just red zone for the one o'clock game situation but. that's just a straight red yeah. run situation i think i need i need big daddy hits and hold my hand in those situations but i didn't especially one you know i need my i need scott in my life bro yeah uh, he's just so good you know like he's so i i think people underestimate what it, it's like to keep up that level of energy the entire time and like communicate with your producers and he doesn't get a break <laughs> have you ever seen his behind the, have you ever seen his behind the scenes bro yeah it's wild he, his his breakfast is wild when he does red zone he eats the saltiest breakfast possible so that it can suck the moisture out of his body so he doesn't have to pee for the entire day of football he says he doesn't pee until halftime of sunday night football that's insane that's bananas and probably not <laughs> To be honest, I want to keep him around. Definitely not good for you. Get him, get him one of those trucker friends. You know the the tr- long haul truck drivers have, where they just 
mm-hmm. they coming up to their their wee wee and it, it pees into like a bucket. Just let them. So who cares? This I is, almost said the Wizenator, but that's something completely different. Fucking the the PA with the worst job on the on Red Zone. It's just like I gotta do. I gotta describe <laughs> this bucket. And, then, and you could like it's like whoever fucked up that day, like whoever made a mistake, has to go and empty Scott's piss bucket. You're definitely getting a call from OSHA at that point. But yeah, I mean, look, I'm not telling you guys how to do your job. I made me let the man take the risk. Yeah, I I really enjoyed. It. I I was a little. It was it was too bad because for me, going into Sunday, I was obviously very excited to have football back, and then like immediately, my dreams for the season were crushed. I did the classic Bears fan, like off season, um, convincing myself of a lot of things. And the fan base is very divided on like whose fault it is that we look that bad about. And I'll just do a brief thing on the Bears because I know that not because the Bears are in the power ranking for good reason. But I, I was, it, it, I've been, as you know, and I think you're one of the few people that can really, really attest to this because you have to be on the receiving end of me crying about this team so often. I have never wavered from the idea that I want to lose and win on the merit of Justin Fields. I, I want to win the game or lose the game based on his performance. And I, I'm really sick of them not letting that happen. And, and I, I was confused as to why in the big 30-year jump, we were running weak running packages like Khalil Herbert gets a toss out to the right and he has to go behind Chase Claypool who has no interest in blocking like just looks like he doesn't want to be there like looks like the kid in the high school class who's just like completely checked out he knows he's going to get an F and he's going to go like get yelled at by his fucking single mom later that day and I'm like I, I don't I have no I can't believe it you know and then we go down and there is a a collective like resignation on the sidelines like nobody's talking to each other like it's week one and a lot of people have been like oh polls didn't do it like this right he should have gotten this guy and he should have done this and i'm like no i don't i don't agree i think we have a decent roster now i'm not saying we're gonna be fucking world beaters but we we have a decent enough roster where i just saw a lack of motivation and a really bad set of play calling which makes me think that it's maybe our coach and this is kind of the first year where the coach is going to get scrutinized to this point because it's, you know, you've, you've had a year now to like instill your value system into this team. And what are you fucking doing? You know? And I, and I just thought like to get a defensive coach in was good because that's the bears identity. But in this day and age, when you have a guy as talented as fields, you gotta, you gotta open him up, man. You gotta let him, like the design runs were terrible and we did like three of them, which was stupid. We, our quarterback committee, we had Deontay Foreman go out to get screen passes. I'm like, have you never watched Deontay Foreman play football? Like, what are you doing? Like, he's, he's your guy to go get screens? Like, run his ass up the middle and let Khalil Herbert break out for the fucking screens. And then finally, we have a fourth round pick as our RB3 that gives us a spark. And it's like, go fuck it, give give it to Roshan. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit who's doing it. You know, like I don't care who what 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 everybody's on the, uh, who where where anybody is on the payroll. You know, and I just think I don't know. It's just like the whole thing was just very upsetting. Like it was very because it was against the Packers, and you know we're making Jordan Love believers, like confirm their belief in this guy who's definitely not as good as like the last two guys that have played quarterback there and we're talking about his mom in the stands and shit and i'm like am i really gonna watch this again the same shit again when we have like a really talented guy at quarterback we're just not letting him win you know what i mean i don't know it's very sad yeah the, the whole game it was just a surprising game how fast how fast I lost interest in that game. Yeah. Is what it, well, you know what I mean? It was one of those where like I was really pumped for that Packers Bears game and it was and, America's game uh, of the week for God's sake. Yeah. And and the Bears defense just didn't show up at all. It's really weird man. because we did for the first like 20 minutes. Like they they actually did. And the problem is Eddie Jackson, I knew was going to be the biggest like problem that we didn't replace because he just gets absolutely burned and he doesn't communicate well with his teammates. And he was awful. Like he just started getting fucked like targeted during that game and it was really really bad he's number four he's the strong safety if you're curious yeah and he was just awful like the whole game and he just started getting exploited and you know i it's i didn't necessarily think that that tremaine edmonds and 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 
Edwards were going to be these like life changing defensive additions, but they were at least like at the start, like guiding the line. They were like, go right, go right. And they're like, you know, the line would slide to the right and we would hit a hole like a lot better. And like, we got a couple of sacks out of that. And I was like, great. These guys can read the fucking offense. Like these are, these are good. That's where I want that. The linebacker position is where I want those guys with those brains to like make those calls, you know? But yeah, then we just started our secondary is still such a problem. Our, our corners are decent, but our safeties are still such a problem. And it's just, but I, again, I, I really do think it seemed like a, um, I know our offensive coordinator is good, is the thing. Like, I know he's good. But he just didn't, didn't seem to be able to do what he was, like, kind of set out there to do. I don't know. It's very fucking impressive. The, the, the lack of uh, willingness to try and force DJ Moore into a game plan, too, I thought was kind of weird. Fuck. Um, it was like he was yeah, man. there. Especially. It, he, he, he caught. Had. He, he literally, he caught two. Pa- it it seems like they they thought about it in the second quarter. They forced two balls into him. We caught them both. Yeah. And then I don't think he, he, they, he didn't do anything else the rest of the game, right? And it's like, that's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah, it was weird. Two where I'm like, yo, like, they're, they're letting Derek Carr take shots down the fucking sidelines in, in New Orleans. Like, they're letting him take shots. Like, and they're coming off sometimes. And I'm like, we're not trusting Justin Fields. So, like, I think he's got a good deep ball. Like, I don't understand. Like, do you, do you think it's th- that they think that they can kind of battle for a, th- that they still feel like that they have something to lose? So they they get really conservative and they think that maybe they can ball control themselves the way into the playoffs. That's and don't let Fields make that's it unacceptable crazy. right now. That's I I agree, but I'm just trying. I, it's the only thing I, I can that think that of. Is, you know what I mean? I it, think that is what they're doing, and I. But I think the point right? is when it's happening and it's starting to unravel as you're doing that. Sticking to that game plan is not an acceptable thing to do. You have to start yeah, to agree. You have to let the most creative improvisational quarterback in the league do that shit. You know what I mean? And like the problem- There's a reason the Cardinals were good with Kyle Murray for two years. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's like you you I was looking at Fields at the start and he looked super fucking confident and he had a swagger about him. And the first couple of drives started kind of work. But then it was like there was like some bad luck at the start because I think that the refs gave us a tough spot on a fourth and one that we went for with fields where I think we got it, but it was like, it was kind of, it was marginal. Like it could have gone either way. And it was two dumb play call choices. Cause it was like, we had Cole Komet run a fucking sneak, which we didn't get on third and one, which was fucking dumb because for me, and again, You're the chiefs. Yeah. I mean, dude, but for me, it's like, bro, have Justin Fields back there. Give him a three choice option. You know what I mean? Like, like let him read it. To fake fake a fucking uh, QB sneak with Justin Fields, you might actually be able to kill them, you know, like when they're piling up on the fucking line of scrimmage and all you need is one guy to beat somebody deep and he can be fast enough to do a little wheel wrap. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, give him the option to make the call, you know, give him some codes to like, to, 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 to do it. And maybe it has something to do with the fact that a lot of the, and I'm, this is my hope, a week one against your biggest rival coming into your house. I'm hoping it's because a lot of these guys have not played together for very like it's a very, very, very fresh roster, and like maybe we can just get our communication down a little bit better and like just go a little bit. But there was a moment, Bobby. Like I bought my TV like last Cyber Monday or or fucking Black Friday or whatever you call it, and there was a moment where Khalil Herbert like got a screen pass, and Chase Claypool had like one guy to guard, and he just like or to block, and he just like, Dude. and I I thought I was gonna smash my television. I I. <laughs> and like I was looking at Chase on his noisy as fuck. Um, I fucking I, I thought I was gonna smash my fucking TV. Like I, I had a, I was like, I'm gonna throw a fucking beer through this television right now because of Chase fucking Claypool. Like this is insane how how lazy that just was. No, he dropped a pass the one time he looked at him. It's like I would bet you, honestly. I I, I hate to say it because I thought coming in on paper it was like a good wide receiver three situation. But I'm like, fuck him. Like, no, unacceptable. Also, wh- who's the motivator? Who's the motivator on the sidelines? Because everybody was quiet as a fucking mouse when we went down. And then when we finally looked like we had some life, we immediately gave up a touchdown. So it's like, then we were no longer. Him. So it was tough. It was tough. I, d- I don't want to keep losing. I really don't want to keep losing. It's it's not a nice feeling. But uh, anyway, on to brighter, uh, broader, brighter and broader pastures. We're going to start talking about these power Number 10, the Ravens. I didn't think they deserved a place anywhere near the top 10 
after that Lamar Jackson outing, after after that game of just like two terrible teams, <laughs> if I'm being honest, playing each other. I don't think they have anybody. I think now that huge injury to their backfield is going to derail their season. Maybe maybe you're just braver than I would be if I was making the power rankings because I would know for a fact that the Ravens are not going to stay on this list and I wouldn't want to be the one like changing them around a ton. But uh, what is it that you see in the Ravens that gets them to this number 10 spot? I just don't... Listen, J.K. Dobbins to me isn't that big of a loss because J.K. Dobbins is a loss every goddamn season of the NFL. He, he gets hurt every year. So it's like, each- that, that at that point is expected. And Zay Flowers is... Uh, I know we talked about like OBJ. We talked about all these guys that he's the best wide. Zay Flowers is one of the best wide receivers Lamar's ever had. And he looked really good on Sunday. And if they can actually have a real connection and then you have Bateman and OBJ as your backup wide receivers, as like your compliments, I don't know if the running back matters much if you have Lamar there. You know what I mean? I feel like you go by committee. You can do Gus Edwards and was Justice Hill at two touchdowns. So I just... With the way that they're set up, I don't think Dobbins is that big of a loss. And if Zay Flowers is real, you got to look out for them, man. You got to look out for them. Because if, if he can have a real pass connection with a legit wide receiver, and you still have to worry about his legs, he's going to be tough to stop. Maybe, but I mean, they play the Houston fucking Texans, Bobby. And like their defense, That's true. defense That's... still looks like bad. <laughs> like... I think if you put a, I think if you put a real offense up against that defense, that's gonna, that's not a good look for them. I think that they have all the hallmarks of a team that are gonna get found out. But hey, you're not wrong about Flowers. Uh, he he cooked against me in fantasy, although I still won thankfully to the thanks to the uh, 53 points that the Dallas Cowboys defense gave me. Uh, thank you for. I'm sorry, but I think I think you're right about the backfields with Lamar and his wheels. But I do think you're also just sort of depending again on this kind of like strike force offense with no real kind of depth to it. Mark Andrews is going to be injury prone this year, it looks like. I don't know. I don't know, man. That deep. Bush, like who else? I, so the the Jets were another team I almost put here. You know that. And who else would be here, though? It's like, I guess the Seahawks, maybe? The Seahawks, Seahawks look pretty, pretty good. good. To be quite honest with you, the Tampa Buccaneers look pretty good. The Bucks did look. Baker looked pretty. He looked all right. He looked right? okay. Uh, you know, yeah, it's why it's a weird week one. So I'm not like subscribing to anything intense. Yeah, week one power rankings are always, you know, it's like you know. Totally. It's... I think that I think that there's some teams that maybe like like underperformed. Like, I to be honest, did you have the Chargers on here? No. Nope. So like they they had they participated in the best game of Sunday. And like the the most fun game to watch on Sunday. And I thought that maybe they could sneak Agreed. in based on that merit because as much as the Dolphins looked great and they really pulled it off and I think they deserve their place in the power rankings, I think like the Chargers really participated in that, in the entertainment value of that game. And it was a wild fucking game and I really enjoyed it. And I thought maybe just on that merit alone, they might sneak in. They still look woefully flawed, but I do think that they have a ton of talent. I think they, I think they have a, they're going to end up with a better record than the Dolphins this year. But we'll see. We'll see. Who's next? The Jags. Yeah. Kind of a plucky, yeah. uh, a, a, a plucky sort of young, uh, burgeoning team. I think that, uh, I, I, I think that I, I've never not believed in Lawrence, but I knew that he needed a couple of years. And now I wouldn't call it a make or break year for him or anything, but I think what we're seeing is like, his talent and uh, helping the talent around him emerge. And I think we kind of saw that was what was going to happen. I think he showed some really good game management from a, a young QB. I think he, I still think his pocket awareness is elite. I, I think it has been since he came into the league. I think he's got really borderline like Tom Brady circa 2007, like pocket awareness, like how the fuck did he know that guy was coming around the blind side kind of a thing. I, and I really enjoy watching him play football. He's got glorious hair. And they're kind of likable. The Jags are kind of likable uh, right now with the, with the players that they have and the skill position players that they have. And I'm not sure they're going to... They might make the playoffs this year. I'm not sure they're going to do much after that. But I think that they might be some team to watch out for in the next like two to three seasons. Two seasons. Because I think I said two to three last year about them. So in the next like one to two seasons, I think that they're going to be some... Uh, maybe perhaps a force to be reckoned with. 
And I think they might be there or thereabouts in this power ranking. What, what made you put him in here? Calvin Ridley. It, it was the determining factor here for me. You know, we knew what they were last year. They're a plucky team. No one saw them coming. And they definitely made some noise against maybe the worst playoff defeat in the history of the NFL. Um, so so that definitely is, is what brought them to the forefront. But now you look at a team that has a legit number one for a, a possible elite quarterback with it a top 10 running back and then you have a top 10 defense to go along with it and you have a coach that's already won a super bowl so it's like you, you just add all those things up in the weakest division in the league they're they're gonna be mainstays on this power rankings i have a feeling this year i think they're gonna be there all year just because of the fact like i said there's no one else in that division i think that that compares to them i mean you look at their division this week texans stink colts stink titans look horrible um I don't think they have any competition in that division. It's going to be, they they might, you know, nine and eight, 10 and seven, but they're going to be in control of that division the whole way. Yeah, I, I, I believe that. <laughs> I don't, um, I think we're going to learn a lot about them this Sunday because they play the Chiefs. Um, we're going to learn a lot about the Chiefs <laughs> as well. Um, I, we'll talk about them a little bit later. Your immediate you know, yeah, just, <laughs> is, uh, is, is funny again this year, um, but that's fine. Uh, I think, I think that's going to be an interesting game because I think it's a bounce back game for the Chiefs um, coming off a game they probably shouldn't have lost, and you know, in prime time on, on Thursday night. And I think, I think that everything you said about this is true. Uh, them staying there or outs in the power rankings is questionable, but I think we'll see. I mean, if they can produce week in a week out like they did this weekend, then it's it's definitely possible. Um, I'm going to buy you a microphone stand just and, and mail it to your house, just for the record. Is it still yeah. doing it? You're fucking with it. You're like, pressing, you're like messing around with your microphone. I have to record the Zoom. Sorry. <laughs> what, dude, um, what? Anyway. Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, interesting. Watch this space with the Jags. I think that's a perfectly reasonable um, spot for them to be. Um, the Buffalo Bills, man. I, I don't know. I, I, think, I think they missed their opportunity. I, I think that their window is closing. I think that there's a reason they've fall, fallen down to eighth on the power rankings when, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, they started off like two or three at the start of the year. Yeah, they were. Um, they they are still on paper a wagon, but I think that there's things falling apart at the seams out there that we're we're not 100% privy to. I believe the rumors that Stefan Diggs is not into Josh Allen as a QB anymore. I, I genuinely do believe those rumors, despite them not like, you know, sort of set in stone as like a provable thing, but um, I'm not that into Josh Allen as a QB because I thought for a couple of seasons that he was being forced into making plays because he didn't have a good offensive line and he couldn't establish a run game with a backfield behind him, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What I think I'm learning now is that he's not a good decision maker. He's not a good decision maker when he really, really needs to be. He doesn't see... It's the opposite problem to what most quarterbacks have, where he he's looking down the seams and deep downfield when he has a ten yard uh, check down throw right fucking in front of him, which must be very frustrating for Bills fans because I think I like you're uh, like it's it's hard to play quarterback in the NFL. Like, you know, don't get me wrong, and, and we're all arm chairing it, but from our angle, when you can see that ten yard guy going across the the first down marker, and you're just like, there he is, you got him. And then he throws it into like a triple coverage. You're like, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? Um, I think you be dumb. Yeah. And I think that's that's the problem that we're facing here. What do you think? It, it seems like his problem is anytime he's under any kind of pressure, like with anyone in his face, he, he forces that off his back, back foot all the time. And then in the red zone, man, he makes so many red zone mistakes. It's unbelievable. Because act. he's not a good short yard. It's it's so weird too because like he doesn't make those decisions correctly. But he's he he's 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 the most unstoppable red zone weapon in the NFL at this point. He's he's a fullback and a quarterback mixed into one. How the hell are you making this many red zone mistakes, man? It's 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 crazy to me. Um, the 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 throw over the middle was the most inexcusable. The one in the double coverage deep into the end zone, man. I don't know what the hell he was doing there. It, it, I know you guys made the comparison earlier of Dak, and it's like the fact that Josh Allen is being brought up with Dak Prescott 
it, it is not a crazy thing at this point in the season. Because I would have thought a couple times during that Bills game this time last year, though. That's what I mean, man. It's 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 crazy how fast they fall. And I personally think it has a lot to do with Dabble. Um, you know, he 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 was the reason. I feel like a look what he did with Jones last year. You know what I mean? Take away that Cowboys game yesterday. Last year, Daniel Jones was literally what happened to Josh Allen previously to that is he was this quarterback that had all these turnovers, that had all these question marks. Dabble comes in right, and um, Dayball, Dabble, I don't even know how. I think Dayball, Dayball right? but sure. Dayball, uh, he comes in and, and turns Allen into this, you know, uh, I think he was runner up for MVP, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, no turnovers. He leaves Allen's turnovers skyrocket. And Daniel Jones yeah. turnovers one so as soon as he goes there. So it's like we know he's a good coach. I, I mean, I know that currently um, his stock isn't super high this week after what just happened. But uh, I mean, he might hate Daniel Jones. I don't know what Daniel Jones ever did to him, but he's that was rough. Uh, but, it's like Chris Collinsworth is like, yeah, he's still in there for reasons. Uh, <laughs> this is like, oh my fucking god. The only reason he could have been in there that late is because he was getting punished. Right, I swear like, to God. It really does seem like it, but who knows? Um, I think, yeah, you could be right. I, you could be right. Um, why not just still do the things that he taught you then? You know, like, why not just remember the things that he taught you to not suck? I mean, I know that might be an oversimplification, but like you sort of alluded to, it's like the physical gifts that this guy has. It's like, it, it's got to be a mental mistakes. Like, I, I'm putting it on him more than like the play calling and stuff because I saw how the plays would work if he would make the plays. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's not a situation where you're like, why the fuck are you handing it off right there? Like, it's not that. It's, dude, that guy was wide open. Like, what are you doing? Or like, dude, there was a there was a there was a if, pocket for you to run into right there. Like, what are you doing? Like, it was a lot of that. So that makes me more nervous. If that makes sense about like his future. Um, but I mean, For the sure. physical gifts that he has, it, it it does seem like he should be getting coached into positions where he he can succeed, or or he should be at, least, at this point with his, his experience. At this point, he should be making better decisions at the, at the NFL level. But he just isn't. Um, and the yeah, Bills and might Bills might be the first team game. to really fall apart, like to really like he he lost in that game, yeah, hundred percent, and he, he lost that game. Not uh, the only uh, time I've ever seen him lose the game for his team yeah, is the thing. Yeah. I'm also playoff situations, you know. So yeah, not the powerhouse that I I I sort. Of no, that was that was the biggest shock of week. It, it, for Rogers to go out like that too, and then you still lose to that oh, game, bro. Like, bro. come on, you can't. I mean, you but can't. maybe there was a rally. You know, maybe there was a rally. Like we lost our guy. I don't know. I, I I think it was perfectly acceptable to put them still in the power rankings based on their roster. I know Mike was like all on you, like, no, it has to be this, it has to be this, just basing all his opinions on week ones. Like every single factor he wanted out of the power rankings had to be what happened in week one. And it's like, that's just not how power rankings work. You know, you have to factor in their roster, factor in their past performances over the last season, et cetera, et cetera. I and the projection for what's yeah. happening moving forward. Schedule and stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, Mike wanting to just, it's like, okay, well, who had the best win? They're number one. Who had the second best win? They're number two. It's like, yeah, that's not how it works. But I think there's uh, merit in keeping them in the power rankings based on the wagon that they still are on paper. But I think there also might be a chance that we don't see them uh, there for. Yeah, they're hanging. They're hanging by a thread. For so. Sure. Uh, watch this space. Like I said about the uh, about the Buffalo Bills, the Detroit Lions come in at number seven um, after just finishing up a conversation about uh, you know week one performances not being the only factor in a in a power rate. The Lions at number seven. Um, you know, I I was I think I was the first one on the show to tell you guys that this was going to be a good Lions team. I I was um predicting that the nfc north would be at the lions division this year um i am on record on the prediction show saying it. i think they made a lot of really really good roster decisions um they did stuff i wanted the bears to do uh they i think have a really talented receiving core that's underrated i think that they have better guys on in their on their defense that uh, than they did last year i think that, i don't think i don't think goff is very good but and like as far as like to win them, you know, silverware, but they they performed very well. What I will say is to get them at number seven on the power rankings after the Kansas City Chiefs clearly lost 
a lot more. And let me rephrase that. Kadarius Tony clearly lost them a lot Kedarius, more than, uh, than the Lions won it. And, you know, uh, we can just fold the Chiefs conversation into this. There, And, you know, spoiler alert, but they're at number three on the power rankings. I think well-deserved. They're still the fucking Super Bowl champions. And as much as they didn't have a good game, Travis Kelsey was hurt, et cetera, et cetera. I would love to address something that I've seen in our group chat all over the internet. And that is the response to Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs has been so much more based on how people feel about Patrick Mahomes' girlfriend and the general Chiefs fan base than his actual football play. And the fact of the matter is, and this is this is just something I have to tell everybody that's like in, in any way trying to talk about sports intelligently. If you're reacting to the reaction of, of a team, then you're not speaking intelligently about the team. If you're reacting to their game, you saw Patrick Mahomes what else did you want Patrick Mahomes to do? What like, yeah? Could he what exactly? It's like, oh, oh. Well, well, Tom Brady never got let off the hook for this and this. I'm like, listen, he or he got Nelson Aguilar. This is his wide receiver. He can't make excuses for not having the guys. It's like, dude, when he hit those guys in the fucking hands, well, in the fuck, they <laughs> caught the fucking ball. So Tom was able to succeed so. with guys that were not as good or like not superstars on paper. But at least they still caught the fucking passes he threw to them. If Kadarius Tony bet on the Chiefs to lose, he couldn't have done a better job of, of, of facilitating their losses. There's a photo going around of him like this in the perfect it, yeah. position and the fucking ball right here and the caption being this resulted in a pick six for the Lions. It's like, what do you want Patrick Mahomes to do? Please? That was what do you want? Well, and that was that was the turning point of the game, of too. I mean, if you look at that picture, if you look in the upper right-hand corner of that picture, all you see is green. So Tony catches that ball, man. He scampers for at least 30 to 40 yards. And, and the Chiefs, I think, are at that point, were up, I think it was like 14-7 or something like that. So they would have been up two scores. It's very tough to come back on the Kansas City Chiefs 100%. two scores. Instead of six tie game, I think actually the Lions went up at that point, maybe. I don't know. But it was it was a huge swing. Um and then the other one, too, where Tony uh, dropped the ball in the red zone, bro. Another one that's right in his goddamn hands. It's like he almost made that fourth and 25 play. He hit a, he hit a receiver in the hands on he, fourth and 25. Past. Yeah. That's uh, uh, Scott. Yeah. Was a Sky Moore at that one? I think. Yeah. Too. Um, what do you want him to wait? Like, yeah. unless you want him to throw the ball to himself. I don't understand where the Patrick Mahomes got. Yeah. And it's like, you're totally right about the Kelsey thing, too, is like. Listen, if Kelsey's in the game, 12 of those targets that Mahomes throws goes to Kelsey, and he catches 10 of them for 164 yards and two touchdowns. So it's like, yes, it is a completely different game if, if Kelsey's in there. It's a completely different game if the Chiefs can catch the ball. The Lions still had to, had to capitalize on it, you know? Um, and I don't think that we saw the best football out of them I'm yet. not taking they, anything away from you. I say that. I'm, I'm reacting yeah. to the... The gleeful social media run about Patrick Mahomes in compare, like first of all, I told everybody it's too early to be making Tom Brady comparisons anyway. So if you're gonna beat him with the fucking stick of like, oh well, Tom Brady, da da da, bitch, he needs five more Super Bowls to be compared to fucking Tom Brady. Like I'm sorry, like we're a long, we did that yeah, math. We're a long, long way away from that. Like you can't arbitrarily decide that he's in the race with Tom Brady and then beat him up for not being Tom Brady. After he's in his fucking late twenties, Tom Brady played until he was eighty six. It's not. It's it just give him a minute. You know what I mean? Like before we start making those comparisons. Additionally, I understand that the Chiefs fan base is probably quite annoyed about like you know their their recent success, but I don't really pay attention to that because it's like that's every fan base. Like every fucking fan base has some sort of vocal minority. It's going to be dicks yeah. when they win and, and idiots when they lose. That's just how it is. I'm just trying to watch the game and analyze the game. And unless he's throwing the ball up in the air and then running the route and catching it and scoring it, I don't know what the fuck else is supposed to do. I genuinely don't. Um, also, I think they're oh, running good. backs. Like really, they're like the things. Things I'm really they don't have running backs, bro. They like really don't strange because I really thought Pacheco was going to be this like big breakout star this year because watching him run, he looked he used to run so hard, and all of a sudden he like, doesn't anymore. Um, McKinnon's like a, you know a third down option. Something. They didn't use him, bro. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. And then Edward Hilaire has like always been too undersized and and like never really worked. You can throw him on special packages and stuff, but 
that's where I worry about them, to be honest with you, because people are like, oh, I have this big wide receiver yeah. issue. And it's like, yeah, no, they do. They definitely do. But I also think that Patrick Mahomes is the kind of guy that can make that work. I think you have to, I think you probably bench at least Kadarius Tony. You have to bench him, right? Or like, what do you do? Like, what? Because it's like he was doing everything right. Like, he was running the right routes. He was getting open. He was getting separation. And then he would come up these drops. It's like, that's a confidence issue. So I don't know what you do there. Do you bench him? Is that going to make it worse? Like, do you try to get him back in the game? But he's like, he's a fucking liability. It can't get any worse. It can't, like, because he can't have a worse performance than the performance he had in that game. But yeah, like I said, I I don't mean to keep talking about the Chiefs because I don't want to take anything away from the Lions. I do think that they look a lot better. I don't think Jared Goff's the guy. And, you know, you were saying like, wow, this Lions defense looks like super legit. I'm like, I, I disagree with you on that one because I think like, Anybody would look super legit if you were getting gift wrapped fucking pick sixes. <laughs> but I mean, true. I, I true. think they are better than last year. I do, but I don't think they're as much better as like, they made them look. Uh, but I'm not trying to take anything away from them, honestly. I think. Or does they have week two? The Lions? Have week two. I'm pretty yeah, sure. I don't see. Week two. Seahawks. Seahawks. That'd be a good game. We'll, 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 get, we'll learn a lot. We'll learn a lot in week two. Here we are again saying we'll learn a lot next week. Yeah, we'll do that until week 16. Until week 15, yeah. <laughs> and then we're just going to be like, what? Well, Chiefs are the best one. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look, it's we'll we'll see how it goes for the Lions. I I, I think I don't want to overreact on them, you know, and I also don't want to overreact on the Chiefs. So it was a good Thursday night game. It was close. I enjoyed it. A uh, hell of a lot closer than the Sunday night game, I'll tell you that much. Although I actually quite enjoyed that one too. Coming in at number six is the woefully underperforming but very highly paid Joe Burrow and his Cincinnati Bengals. Um, I thought that the, I don't think this is why the Bengals lost. I do think they really underperformed, but we'll point out a few things. One, they always start slow. They always start slow every single season. And then everybody's eating. Everything is every year before. And everybody is eating crow by the time Christmas rolls around. Everybody. So I'm not doing that this year. Maybe they don't pull it around this year, but I'm not going to be the one to write them off. I'll say a few things. One, I thought the Browns defense actually looked really good. Um, I'm not I'm not making excuses really for Burrow. I think, you know, if you get a contract with that, you can't be throwing sub 100 yard games. That's fucking, I don't care what defense you're playing. I don't care if you're playing the fucking robots that do the Fox NFL Sunday countdown shit. That I, it doesn't matter. You got to throw over 100 yards. You get paid that kind of money. No excuses there. But probably be tough to get 100. Yeah. Well, if you're getting paid that kind of money, you better fucking figure it out. Um, the the fact is though, like Miles Garrett, like I think was me and Mike's pick for defensive player of the year. He looked every bit the defensive player. He looked like a st- did you see the the crossover. Did you see the crossover? I gift mentioned that, and it's like he's a fucking stud. That guy, and I think his leadership and his performance make that whole defense's level rise up like a, a rising tide. Uh, floats all ships. Whatever that fucking expression is. I, I, he looked unbelievable. I, I wouldn't have wanted to play against him. You know, if I was Joe Burrow, I probably would have been shitting myself too, thinking about my Bugatti or whatever. But I, uh, in saying that, I still think that the Bengals are going to figure it out. Um, I think that the Browns are not going to be better than them this season. I don't think they have a chance of like finishing higher than the Bengals in this division. I would be very surprised. I think the Browns are, Browns are probably better than they've been in our lives right now, to be honest with you, but they're still the fucking the Browns. So I'm just not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> like I'm not doing it. I'm not entertaining that. Um, but they would have might maybe been a decent shot for number ten of the power rankings. Also, putting that. Out there. But um, what do you think? Would you what do you think of the game? Are you worried? Do you think that they'll pull it around again? Is Joe Burrow done? Does he not give a shit anymore because he got that contract? Doesn't seem like that kind of guy to me. No, I I think he just didn't play at all during training camp. I mean, he was you know he I think he had what is it? He had he had the calf or the thigh or whatever it was. Um, then he was getting that contract. I just think, like you said, they start slow and of course you're going to start slow and literally you're not getting any reps with anyone until that first game. Like, and, and it clearly showed, um, but I think they're going to be fine. I do think the Browns are definitely a team to look out for if they can figure out that offensive identity and Watson can figure his shit out. Um, I think that they could definitely be a force to reckon with because, as we all know, the first thing that shows up every year is elite defense. It's, it's the first thing that you can tell on paper weeks one through three. You know who has an elite defense by week three. And the Cleveland Browns are, are definitely a candidate for one of those teams. 
Um, so you got to watch out for them because any week, any week they could hold yeah. anyone to three points and win that game. So, yeah, definitely gotta watch I mean, I, I, I don't think there's a ton that we can speculate on with the Bengals at this point. I just don't. Yeah, I'm not worried about the bat. Talk to me, like like you said, week three, that's when we start to get Talos and the Bengals. The Bengals are still struggling like week three, week four, and they haven't had at least one game that looks like them again. That's when we can worry. But until then, I think it's time. To um, how about them Dolphins? Yeah, no fucking awesome. So Dolphins, I mean, look, I don't, I think that they're, both teams are very flawed. I think it was like two dolphin like two the dolphins and the chargers both looking like teams that had huge flaws that kind of resulted in a really entertaining game if you would would you agree with that um i don't know if the dolphins are necessarily going to be like world beaters this year but i think that they're going to be a lot of fun to watch uh i still like listening to mike mcdaniel and (laughs) watching him on the sidelines um there was a a guy his name's like dan something he's a stand-up comic and he's in the show billions and I guess his best friend growing up was Mike McDaniel. And I'll send you this video, but he tells this great story about like playing Madden at his house when they were kids. And he's like, imagine the kid that you played Madden with as a kid, as a, as a young man is in Madden now. He's like, and he used to beat my ass in Madden because he would take, uh, he would just, uh, he would always just pick um, Deion Sanders and take him all the way back and pick me off every single time. And every time he was running back to the pick six, he'd be like, prime time. Prime time, and I'm like, I would be so mad in the basement. I'm like, wow, what a story we could all relate to. Mike McDaniel coming in through is like the most relatable millennial coach of all time. Again, uh, but and I really, really enjoy is, him, man. and I really enjoy the Dolphins in general right now. Um, I think they're going to finish higher than the Pats, and because of what we've talked about uh, in that division, they have the potential. They honestly, now that Aaron Rodgers is down, um, you know the the Pats looking flawed. They're not going to be the best division winners, even in the AFC, I don't think. But they definitely have the potential to be, you know, be the guys coming in, um, coming in as the as the winners in that division. What do you think? Do you do you, do you predict it's going to happen? Yeah, I, I could see it. That's for damn sure. Um, listen, the Bills just lost to a New York Jets team without Aaron Rodgers and Zach Wilson as their starting quarterback. So yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, you know, you you get to a. Um, rolling against any team in the NFL at this point with Tyreek Hill, man. I don't think there's anyone that can stop them when they're actually rolling. You know, it's it's going to be a tough team to beat, especially if you're going to be turning the ball over like the Bills tend to do. So um, I could absolutely see them winning that division. As far as this game, I completely agree that I think it is two flawed teams, and I think it's um, two teams that, you know, if, if it met in the playoffs, it would be one of those things where it's like, I know. which one is going to give, like, you know, which, that's which, which that game like, is shaped up, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I still don't really believe in the Chargers as much. The Chargers I do believe in the Dolphins mostly, mostly because, those, like, you said, the problem. They're really bad. Yeah. They're, they're like, so. That's bad. just going to be true it's in their so season. Bad. And for Kellen, for Kellen Moore to be the answer is like, man, I, I just went yeah. through Kellen Moore for three years at right Chargers right. fans. Yeah, I, right. I guarantee you're going to have moments where you're going to love him. Those plays too. Looks like you got to eat crow on that one. Oh. Uh, Bro, for real, um, we'll get like, come on. Um, I was the one thing I will also point out is I was vocally talking shit about the Dolphins' offensive line because they looked like trash in the in the off season, in the preseason. I didn't think they made a lot of additions in the off season. I mean, they had Cleo Mack and fucking Bosa to contend with, and they looked pretty good. They they, but I don't. Did they love yeah, the sack? I didn't see any because I was watching for him. Uh, I'm worried uh, about no, too his no, fucking no. brain health, so I am watching for those sacks. And I thought that week one was going to be the one where he gets fucking destroyed, but I guess not. So maybe I was wrong about their offensive line, and maybe they're just going to you know, come together as a unit and do a good job. But we'll see. Uh, another one to just watch this space on this... Um, uh, sorry. Um, on this team, because I, I do think that they're, they have the potential in the division. They have the potential to be very entertaining. Um, the... it's, it's, so, you know, so you mentioned the, the writer's strike. It's funny because it kind of seems like we're rehashing the same exact <laughs> conversations that we had last year because because it's the same exact goddamn script. They're just putting the whole fucking thing out again. They're like, all right, dolphins? Dolphins? Yeah, I mean, kind of good. We don't really yeah, know. Yeah, all right, yeah, we'll do yeah, that again. You're not wrong. Well, on that note, uh, <laughs> moving on to the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't. We, we talked about them uh, briefly, but as a more in-depth conversation, 
I'm a little worried about them. Um, I would maybe be worried if I was an Eagles fan. I think it's got Super Bowl hangover written all over it this season. I really do. They are so fucking stupid. I think that they do what? Uh, who is the running back? They, did they pick up DeAndre Swift? Yeah, the Swift. Yeah. I, I like their backfield yeah, better last season. I like their coaching better last season. I like the the ways that they were able to cover Hertz and his the holes in his game last season. I don't I I don't think so. I I just don't think so in the NFC. I don't think that they're the, they're the powerhouse that we thought they were. And quite frankly, if I'm going to overreact to Week One about anything, I'm going to overreact about the Cowboys versus the Eagles because the Cowboys look hell a lot better than the Eagles in Week One. So what do you think? Are you worried about these guys? I mean, they you know they haunt you. Um, no, uh, to be perfectly honest, this is, this is the year I think that we overtake them. Um, because the Super Bowl hangover, we, we've talked about a year in and year out, man. And I just think it proves itself every single year to be a thing that's, that is a legitimate real thing. And I, I don't think losing two of the best coordinators yeah. in the game can be understated. Like, bro, when, when you have consistency in that offensive game room, in that defensive game room, it is everything. You know what I mean? You know what to expect when you're breaking down tape. You know what offense you're running. You know what you're, where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there. You don't have to think about it. You just do it. And, and the lack of execution that you saw on Sunday, in my opinion, is because of this. You know what I mean? Um, I do think a little bit did have to do with Bill. Um, and you know, I mean, him being the mastermind, supposed, he is especially you're supposed coming to be into the one game. The NFC. You got to overcome Look, convincingly. That they did, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. They should have put them away because they were clearly the better team. We were all expecting it. Everyone was expecting it. And and if Mac Jones is going to sit there, what do he have? A hit he like three hundred and twenty yards. Yeah, bro. Yes, it's yes, like yes, he was good. Yeah, you, you, you can't. You, you can't. You can't let Mac Jones do that to you if you're going to be one of the better defenses in the league. You can't. You just can't, especially with the wide receiver core he has. Um, was I, I know the Pats look better this week, but I was expecting way more, way more out of Jalen Hurts. Way more. You're supposed to be an MVP candidate, bro. You know what I mean? He's supposed to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league coming into this year, all this upside, and it, it just didn't look Again, it's, it's it's hard to react to a week one, but it didn't look like the no. Eagles that we thought it was going to be. Didn't look well, like the Jalen Hurts. It didn't, didn't look like the offense. It was non-existent, like yeah. up and down. Um, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, I guess we'll see. But I, I have a feeling. I have a feeling that this this might be a down year for them. So I guess we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. We sort of uh, the Chiefs are number three. We sort of talked about them already, but I do have to just call out your fucking um, your office. Same thing. You're doing the same thing again. You watched lose one game. You you spent the whole off season lamenting to me that I I was right and you were wrong that I should have just believed in the Chiefs. And then you're like dropping them to number three in the power rankings. The fucking champions and probably the best team on paper in the entire NFL. And they lose one game week one with their best player on offense out and their best player on defense out. And you're dropping them down to three because Ray said so. I I don't get it. But I had him at I had him at two originally um and i jumped one team up yeah. to number one we'll get there in a second just 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 because i had to because i was able to and, and logistically back it up um but yeah i mean i don't necessarily think they're the third best team i still think they're the champs and you know this week to me is going to be very telling because if they go to zero and two then i think there's there's different things to talk about but um who do you say we we said they were playing Jags this week, right? Yeah, that's gonna be it's gonna be a good game. Can't wait for that. Um, but if they go to zero and two, that's that's a whole different story. But I don't see it coming. I have a feeling they're gonna be. It's gonna be the same thing as that. They're gonna be in the top three all year. Similar old. question all year to move. Since we did a lot on the Chiefs already, to move on to number two. Similar question: How can both of these two things be true? Bobby says. The Steelers are terrible. They're not good. They, you know, they're not. They don't have a good team. The quarterback sucks. Like they, you know, it doesn't prove anything to beat them. But if the 49ers go out there and beat them, then they're number two on the power rankings overall. Whoa! Why is that such a big proof of of life to you in that in the 49ers sense? I I get that they looked elite at defensively. I and I really do think they looked elite. But I will say, like the Steelers looked fucking pathetic. Like I, I really do think that they looked worse. I would have they they would have looked like that against anybody. 
they looked like they had never met each other <laughs> there in the field. Like it was, it was absolutely god awful. Um, their defense looked like a step behind everything. Um, their offense looked like it had no idea what it was doing. They did one thing right for the entirety of the game, and it was Deontay Johnson making a like a nice little move, and then he immediately goes down with a hammy. I don't know what the fuck they were doing out there, to be honest. So I, it didn't prove a ton to me about the 49ers, especially when the night game then comes and the fucking Cowboys defense looks like that. And it's like, everyone's like, 49ers defense, 49ers defense. And it's like, if you don't think the Pittsburgh Steelers are good, what does it prove to you? I just, so my biggest question mark for them coming into the season, I, I knew what they were. We know what the defense is. We know what playmakers they have. We know everything. The only thing we were wondering is if Brock Purdy was healthy is, and if he could be a He's legitimate good. quarterback. And I thought he looked good on Sunday. I mean, I know it was only one week, but the fact that he went from noodle arm, we don't know if he can throw, to making that one throw to, who was it? Like, was it Ayuk? Yeah, it was Ayuk in the corner of the end zone there. You lit him up that day. It was awesome. Bro, it, he was making some beautiful throws. So it's like, if he can make those throws, I think, the 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 sky is the limit for this team. You know what I mean? If they have a guy, because you 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 saw the team that they can be with a quarterback, they can't make those goddamn throws. You know what I mean? So if they have someone that can consistently make those throws to their big time guys, so it's their off. They're a that's, tough that's actually convincing team you. To, no, yeah, because listen, the defense already yeah. convinced us. We know who they are. You know yeah. what I mean? We know. Who um, I think that yeah, I do. I'm not taking anything away from Brock Purdy. I really did did think he had a great performance. I think I'd be more mad if somebody didn't have a great performance with the kind of weapons that they have. Like, you can just hand it off to Christian McCaffrey and have him break off for a run at any time. Um, Ebo, uh, IU, you know, there's guys all over this, all, all over the field for San Francisco that make them look dangerous. I don't think that there's, I don't think that there's a reason they shouldn't be number two. I think they probably are number two right now. In my head, uh, I'd, they're probably number three for me. It's probably still the Chiefs at number two. I'm not mad that you put the Dallas Cowboys at number one. I think if they ever deserved the number one spot in the power rankings, it's after that fucking shellacking they just handed out. I'm proud of them for scoring me so many points on fantasy, but also, like, that was a beatdown, bro. Like, I have never, I don't know, I don't remember the last time I've seen a game that lopsided, especially a night game in prime time. And against the Giants team that everybody had being above average, at least coming into this season. Danny Dimes, Danny fucking doing time. Danny on the fucking on his ass. Like I, he got hit fifty six times. Yeah. It's insane. I felt Ouch. bad for him. Dude, but I did too. They were dropping balls every chance they got. Picks, fumble recovery, sacks, tackles for loss, zero missed field goals, zero fucking points on the board. A fat goose egg. Forty on the other end scored a ton by the defense. That Cowboys defense is unbelievable, man. And they're a real unit. They're a real unit now. Um, and and the guys that were look like flashy young, you know, the, the digs is of the world, um, flashy young players that maybe had some holes in their game, letting balls go over their head last season. Nope, not the case anymore. Everybody's getting everybody's a unit. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun to watch, man. It was genuinely a lot of fun to watch. Um, I watched the entire game, like when they were up like third. 33 zero i was yeah, still watching you. and texting with you and being like this is fucking crazy but uh yeah i mean i don't think they're gonna do that every week but man what a confidence booster coming in so please take your uh take your moment with the dallas cowboys yeah man um i thought the coolest thing was that by three four minutes into the game you already had big plays by parsons you already had big plays by Diggs. you had big play uh, by okay. Pollard already. Half the time I told you Pollard being by, like, by, by not being in a committee. We said this. We said this all last night season. Night and day. Uh, but hey, you got to say sorry to Mike McCarthy for talking that shit because he play, he called a hell of a game. He called a hell of a game. He and and you know game. what else he did? He made Dak Prescott the quarterback I told you Dak Prescott needed to be to fucking for the Dallas Cowboys to be six. It doesn't. It doesn't, doesn't hurt when hurt, you're up thirty. But nothing, but you run but. a game management from the offensive side, right? Where you where you're asking the offense to score fourteen to twenty one points a week, and you're managing the game and asking them more so to take care of the football and not turn it over. That's the most important thing. So your defense can go to fucking work. Okay, that's what I told you was going to be the the key to the Cowboys' success last season. They didn't do it. This season seems like they're doing it. Seems like Dak's mm-hmm. buying it. Seems like the play calling is is seamless. 
And I'm into it. I don't usually love when a head coach takes over play calling. Usually that's a desperation move. But to call it before the season, I thought was smart to just say, nope, this is what I'm doing. This is what's happening. Give me the keys. Um, I'll be honest. I thought it, I, I didn't think it was going to go that well. And maybe it still won't. Maybe there's ways that he's going to get found out. But if the defense can consistently play like that, wow, Jesus Christ, does it even matter? No, it doesn't. Like I said, the uh, the offensive defensive, or if you want to get that, the offensive defense, because they they have a chance to put up twenty one points every do single sure. week, <laughs> and um, they're not going. No, they're definitely not going to. But they definitely, can. you know what I mean. Like that, any potential week, they can yeah. easily score multiple defensive touchdowns. Um, I th- I thought what was so cool too was the the smaller guys making the plays, like the it, 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 I can't pronounce his name the guy that returned the field goal for the touchdown um you know we have damon clark making plays all over the place um and the defensive line man that was the most impressive part of the whole thing it is that I mean, front seven been, was we, just you killed. gotta be able just to bring pressure with four bro. guys you gotta be able to and they were and they able to add blitz well. packages that were immediate sack you know because build on that pressure it was it was yeah. bananas well I think what's huge is now, so Micah's, Micah's fully transitioned to that defensive end position, so you constantly yeah. have to keep two eyes on him, two guys, at all times, and that just frees up everything else. And Micah's, st- Micah's still getting his, but all the other guys have so much more freedom on that defensive line because he exists there now, man. Um, yeah, no, that, that defense is going to be special, for sure. I haven't had this much high hopes, because if you ask me, if you ask me, they were by far, it wasn't even close. The most top to bottom, well rounded team of week one. And there's, it wasn't even close, if you ask me. You know, like offensive execution, defensive execution, special teams execution. The Dallas Cowboys, crazily enough, like I can't believe I'm saying this, they executed that yeah. game perfectly. And they don't do that. So if that's something that can actually be done by then and they can actually play clean football, game in, and game out, I think that this could be until we get to the playoffs, a whole different story. It could be a uh, special regular Bobby, season. You can't even get excited about the postseason because of what the Phil Wizard done. To- you know, I'll say this also as a, as a final point, and we can wrap this up. Um, they didn't do it under the radar. They did it in Sunday Night Football, the first Sunday Night Football game of the season. And I think that there's been a historic uh, representation of folding under the lights for the Dallas Phil Wizards of franchise um, since we've been alive, or since we've been like, you know, teenagers on, I guess. Um, and the pressure of being a Dallas Cowboy has like, you know, and Jerry Jones and like that whole thing, I think is, it has historically been a problem. And I have to credit Mike McCarthy, I think for this, I, I really do think that he's gotten that team all reading off the same hymn sheet. Everybody's drinking that same Kool-Aid. And I, I was very impressed, very, very impressed by the Dallas Cowboys. Um, yeah, I mean, good. that feels good. I'll just, uh, we made the whole segment. Since, like, you know, you know, you're, you're, you've been sort of trained now to be down on, more down on them and like not get excited. And I was the one to like pump up the fucking Chicago Bears, knowing that, uh, not knowing that I'm going to be terrible. But I'm happy for you. I'm sure we're going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys quite a lot. I mean, I'm really looking forward to watching. As you know, my favorite thing to watch is a, is a Bullhawk elite defense. It's my favorite thing in football. I haven't seen a defense like this in a long time. I mean, the 49ers are a great unit, but I don't know if they have like the special athletes. Um, as many special athletes uh, and and as well coordinated of a defense as, as the Cowboys, they're very very impressive. Um, and I don't have that weird Dallas Cowboys thing that everyone else seems to have because they've always kind of been terrible since I've been watching football. So I don't really mind that they're good now. <laughs> so and you know you're my buddy, so I'm happy. For- Thanks. Thanks. I, here, I appreciate the support, um, DK. Still on. The, uh, <laughs> th- this week we have done our first uh, regular season power rankings. This is going to be a lot of fun, as always. Um, this week it was just me and Bobby. We were hoping to get everybody else more involved as the season goes on. Um, but for myself, for the real BK, Bob Kelly, and everybody here at Mr. Point, happy NFL season, everybody. We are underway.
Oh, welcome to Ringside with Ray and Prince. My name is Ray Leonard Jr. Oh, is that the set? No, that's just my dad. My name is Prince Daniels Jr. Daniels again with a big hole. Touchdown! On this show, we come to humanize athletes, entertainers, business executives. We're going to see what makes them tick. Tuesdays, 10 a.m. Pacific time on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, and wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you there. Peace and power. Electric ass. Hey, what's happening out there, everybody? This is Lawrence Ross, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about my podcast, The Lawrence Ross Show. Egomaniac. It's a two-hour weekly exploration into my mind. I also do sketches, celebrity impersonations. You're out of order! And I also do song parodies. Not too shabby for a blind guy. Not only are you visually impaired, but you are geographically impaired. New episodes are released every Friday. Check it out on your favorite podcasting platform or listen to it here on Society 13 on Electrocast. Electric acid.